Welcome to Plugged In. I'm Deb, and it's great to be part of our host team. If you are new to our show, you might be asking, what is Plugged In? Plugged In is a show that's about your health, and specifically, the health of your kidneys. Today's show is extra special because it's March, and that means it's Kidney Health Month. So it's Kidney 101, here we come. But before we get to all that, let me introduce my three great co-hosts here today. Daniel, William, and Amra. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having Hello. us. Hello. Gang, I gotta say, looking pretty sharp with those shirts. These are mm -hmm. nice, aren't they? Yeah. What, what do they say? Uh, March is Kidney Health Month, kidney.bc.ca. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, looking See? pretty slim there. Well, you know, as I told you I did before, I'm trying to bring sexy back. People think I'm playing. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I mean, I guess today's show is kind of like everything you want to know about kidneys, but you're afraid to ask. You yeah. bet, but we also like to have some fun. Well, to kick things off, and in spirit of Kidney Health Month, we're going to play a round of the game that's sweeping the nation. Are you as smart as a nephrologist? Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> Team, wow. here are your game pals. Oh, wow. Get Look at your this. brain Look power going. Look at you. Organized. Fun. Here comes the first okay. question. I'm ready. True or false? Mm -hmm. One of the functions of your kidneys mm -hmm. is to remove excess water from the body. <laughs> well, false. Water is healthy. <laughs> Sorry, Amro, it is actually true. It is actually true. For your body to work properly, it has to contain the right amount of water. So one of the most important jobs of the kidneys is to move excess water out of the body and retain the right amount that it needs. Got it right. mm -hmm. right. So, Ooh, you guys are on the board. All right. I Second something. question. True or false? Mm -hmm. One in a hundred British Columbians has kidney disease. Ah. True or oh, false? Uh, it's, uh, it's actually true. There's more than a hundred people in BC. Unfortunately for AMRO, it is actually false. One, wow. one in wow. ten British wow. Columbians wow. has kidney disease. One in ten. Wow. Oh, there's more than ten people in BC. Two Dems. down, two yeah. down. <laughs> All right, number three. Here All we right. go. Number three. Let's see if we can get AMRO on the board. Number three. On average, adult kidneys are the size of ping pong balls. Oh, I know balls. this one, I know this one. True or false? Uh, it's actually true, but they're the size of actual kidney beans. I could see why you would think that. I, you I, are I, right I, again, I, William. I <laughs> <laughs> it is actually, uh, it is actually false, Amro. <gasps> kidney beans are actually the size of your fist, so they're roughly the size of this kidney stress ball. Now, normally people have two kidneys, mm -hmm. one on each side of their spine under the lower ribs. Although we have two kidneys, we can all live with one kidney. We can live a normal life with one healthy kidney. I am. Well, that's right. And we're glad to have you here, Will. Thanks. Now, our last question. All right. This last question is actually worth five so points. That means you okay, can let's do this. Points. Feel so pretty good about this. Here. All right. Feel pretty we're good. ready. We're ready. True or false? Okay. Kidney disease can affect anyone at any age with the exception of infants. Oh. That's true because infants are immortal to the age of five. Okay, let's move this along. <laughs> we, we know who the winners are here. We do too. It is actually false. Kidney disease can affect anyone at any age. Mm. So if my math is correct, Deb and Will, you're both the winners. Ooh. Congratulations. Amro, uh, we will... Uh, we'll get our prize later, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, wow. so that was fun. That was great. Okay, well, not that I'm a poor sport or anything, but I'm going to move this along. So, not only do we celebrate Kidney Health Month in March, but it's also March Drive. That means a March Drive canvasser may come knocking at your door this month to raise awareness about the cause and funds to help kidney patients. These canvassers are truly amazing volunteers. Rain, wind, sleet, or snow, nothing stops them. Some of these canvassers have been volunteers with us for over 20 years. We could not do this campaign without them, so thank you. Amen to that. And it's World Kidney Day on March 9th. And here at the BC and Yukon branch, we're pulling out all the stops this year and celebrating World Kidney Day in a big way with the fifth annual Kidney Gala. That's right, William. And it's being held at the beautiful Fairmont Hotel in Vancouver. And the gala raises critical funds to help support kidney patients and promote hope for their future through research. Not only does it raise funds to a great cause, mm -hmm. it's a really fun night. Mm -hmm. Some great entertainment, amazing three-course dinner, fabulous silent and live auctions. I can keep going. And don't forget, Man About Town, Fred Lee will be there, along with many other guests. Oh, right. And of course, Plugged In will be there filming live. So don't miss out. Join us at the gala, and maybe we'll catch you for an interview in our gala media hub. 
And you can get more information on the gala and to purchase tickets at kidneygala.com. Okay, in the meantime, we've got a great show lined up, jam-packed with information about your kidney health, so don't go away. Really, don't go away. Don't. <laughs> That's right. Just don't do go it. Go get a cup of coffee. Come right back. We'll be we'll waiting. We'll for you. Mm -hmm. Stay glued. In communities across the province, volunteer canvassers from the Kidney Foundation are knocking on their neighbors' doors to help raise funds and awareness about kidney disease. Why? Because March is Kidney Health Month. Deb Tucker sat down with Marie Hess from BC and Yukon Branch to talk about the difference that each dollar can make. Marie, can you tell us how the funds raised from March Drive make a difference for kidney patients and their families? Absolutely. The millions of dollars raised through the March Drive campaign over the years has made a significant impact in supporting kidney patients. Whether it's funding our world-renowned kidney-related research for better treatment options, this also includes transplantation, which is the ultimate treatment option for kidney patients. Can you explain a little bit more about the types of uh, programs and services that the March Drive campaign um, supports? Every hard-earned dollar is put to good use, whether it's through our patient and education support programs or providing financial grants for those who have fallen through the cracks, providing help to those who need it most. And it's also providing a home away from home for kidney patients who live outside of the Lower Mainland that need to travel to Vancouver for medical treatment. We have seven kidney suites available for patients to stay up to two months while they recover from a kidney transplant. And we also have a special program where we send kids who are fighting this incurable disease to summer camp who just need to be kids again. So we know that volunteers are absolutely critical to this campaign. Can you share a little bit more about just how important they are? It is through the efforts of our committed hundreds of volunteers who are knocking on doors, and to everyone who is contributing. Without these funds, this would, these programs would not be possible. Hi, and thanks for joining me for this segment of Healthier You. I'm Anya, a registered dietitian at St. Paul's Hospital. Here on Plugged In, we've been telling you a lot about World Kidney Day, being celebrated on March 9th. But did you know that the theme for World Kidney Day this year is obesity. It's a very important and relevant topic for kidney patients and the general population alike. So with the theme of World Kidney Day in mind, I'm here to talk to you about obesity and mindful eating. Obesity is a growing issue worldwide and it can complicate chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, arthritis and kidney disease. There are many factors that affect the way we eat. These can be both internal cues such as feeling hungry or when you're feeling full or external cues like diet plans or plate sizes. Strategies that help with weight loss include mindful eating, paying attention to your hunger and fullness cues and managing portion sizes. It's really hard to change the way we eat. It can be especially difficult because food is all around us. It's linked to celebrations, it can be used as a form of coping with difficult situations and can also be given as a reward. Dieting and diet plans can be counterproductive and actually result in weight gain. Never mind feeling like you're the only one missing out when everybody else has pizza and cake and you can't. When I work with my clients, I encourage them not to label any foods as good or bad. All foods can be part of a healthy diet. A strategy that I like to use with my clients is called mindful eating. This means that we look at different triggers that can affect us to overeat, such as distractions while eating, like watching TV, playing on your phone, working at your computer, or eating when you're feeling lonely, sad, stressed, or bored, and over-restricting or dieting and then binge eating afterwards. When we get distracted, it becomes harder to focus on your body's internal cues and the signals that your body tries to tell you when it's full or hungry. If you can't remember the last time you had a meal without your phone in your hand or the TV on, you've become a victim of mindless eating. Mindful eating is a strategy that encourages you to put your attention to the food in front of you. The way it tastes, the way it smells, the textures, and the thoughts and feelings that arise while eating. It takes out the judgment associated with eating and instead brings joy to every meal. It can be hard to get rid of distractions in our busy lives, but try to avoid multitasking while eating and instead put your attention to the food in front of you. 
If you want to get started right away, I suggest you take three meals a week where you try to get rid of distractions. So, turn off your TV, get rid of your phone, and really focus on the food in front of you. Really think about what you're eating and what thoughts are coming up as you're eating. Life can get stressful and we can start to feel like other things take priority over eating. But taking the time for yourself to step away from distractions and sit down to a meal can be a really important first step towards better health. Sustainable weight loss cannot happen overnight and there are no magic pills. It requires lifestyle changes that you can stick to. Giving yourself permission to eat your favorite foods can lead to a more positive relationship with food and help with weight management long term. A registered dietitian can work with you to set goals that work for your lifestyle. And of course, include your favorite foods. Thanks for joining me today on Healthier You. We'll see you next time on Plugged In. It's Kidney Health Month and I'm very pleased to be here today with Dr. Bevilacqua, nephrologist in Fraser Health. We're here today to talk about Kidney 101 and how to keep your kidneys healthy. Welcome. Great, thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to open up with, can you talk a little bit about why your kidneys are important? What function and role do they play when, within our body? Sure, yeah, like any other major organ system in your body, the kidneys are vital for you to have a nice, healthy life. Um, the thing that the kidneys do specifically is that they manage a lot of the waste products and toxins that your body makes. So you're always kind of making these things that your body doesn't need just as you go about your daily activities. And the kidney's job is to clean those out and eliminate that. It also plays a role in managing um, a lot of the fluids and salts and chemicals in your body and keeping those things in balance. Um, there's some hormone systems as well that the kidney uh, takes care of and again keeps things in balance throughout your body. So it really does a lot of things throughout your, uh, your whole body. And we have two kidneys, and yes. a lot of people probably don't even know where they are located. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So uh, you get the, I get this question very frequently, actually, so that's a good one. So your kidney, it's, it's about the size of your fist, a normal-shaped kidney. Yeah. Each one is about the size yeah, of your size fist. Size of your fist, yeah. And it kind of sits right here under your rib cage there okay. uh, at the back. So I have another question. You yes. have two kidneys, and if the doctor tells me something's wrong with my kidneys, does that mean... Well, I've got two, so only one's affected and I've got my backup kidney to keep me going? That's a very good question, and I, I get asked that question a lot. Um, m there are some very, very specific things that can happen that will target just one kidney, some types of injury or things like that, but for the vast majority of the time, diseases that affect the kidney affect everything all at once. So both kidneys would be affected at the same time. So unfortunately, even though there's two of them, um, they would both be uh, impacted equally. Obviously, kidneys are very important to one's overall health. Can you talk about some of the ways that one can keep their kidneys healthy? Some tips? Sure. So, the important thing to remember is that a lot of the kidney diseases we see are not specific things that target just the kidneys. Right. So, a lot of the tips that we give um, about keeping kidneys healthy is just general good health mm -hmm. tips. So, that's where we talk about things like stopping smoking, making sure you're getting enough exercise, uh, a nice healthy balanced diet. Um, people always ask about very specific types of diets that they right. want to follow. There's all kinds of trendy diets out there. Um, you might hear something like the DASH diet, which a lot of, of doctors talk about, but really at the end of the day, all it comes down to is having a good balanced diet. Um, the one thing that we harp on mm -hmm. as kidney doctors is to cut back on the salt mm -hmm. and make sure that people are, are well hydrated. And then aside from that, because of the fact that most kidney diseases are related to chronic diseases like high blood pressure or diabetes, um, if people have those conditions, it's very, very important for their kidneys that those are well managed and well controlled. So if the kidneys are not functioning properly, what are some of the warning signs? Yeah, that, that's one of the tough things actually about kidney disease is that um, it's one of these silent kind of diseases uh, in most people. So there are some specific things that, that sometimes people experience when they have kidney disease. Sometimes blood pressure goes out of control. 
Sometimes people might notice some changes in the way that they're, they're passing or their urine or things like that. But actually the vast majority of people don't notice anything until it's very, very advanced. Until it's very late, right. Yeah, so that, that's why we really do uh, try to make a, an effort to screen people who we think might be at risk of kidney disease and try to identify it early. Because if we're waiting for symptoms to appear from kidney disease, often we've kind of waited a little bit too long and things are pretty advanced by that time. So when we talk about screening people who might be at risk for kidney disease, what are some of the risk factors? For people out there, how do they know if they fall into that risk category? Yeah, so uh, in Canada and most other you know, developed countries, most kidney diseases are not from the kidney themselves. They're as a result of chronic um, um, conditions of other kinds. The big ones being things like high blood pressure and, and diabetes. Mm -hmm. So anybody who has a chronic condition like that, it's definitely uh, worthwhile for them to, to see and talk to their doctor and, and they'll do some screening to make sure their kidneys are, are in good shape. Now, outside of people who already know about those conditions, mm -hmm. um, we actually have a tool out there on, on the website that people can kind of go through and see if they might be at risk. So um, on our BC Renal Agency website, under health information, there's actually a little questionnaire that people can go through and it'll, um, they'll have to answer some simple questions about themselves and they'll be able to, to see if they should go to their doctor and be screened for kidney disease. Oh, well that's really good to know. And there's certain, um, ethnicities too that tend to be at a little at higher risk I guess for kidney disease. Yeah and a lot of them go hand in hand with some of those chronic conditions as well right. so for example our, our Aboriginal population and we have all kinds of, of different First Nations peoples in BC um, they do unfortunately experience rates of, of chronic kidney disease that are quite high and also rates of uh, high blood pressure and diabetes right. that are quite high as well. So those go together. Same thing with our South Asian population. Right. A lot of those things kind of tr come together as, as a package, unfortunately. So we, we do see a lot of this here in BC in our different populations. In our different populations. How would you explain to someone what is kidney disease? Yeah, so there's kind of two big thi things that can go kind of wrong with the kidney. So there's things that can happen suddenly and be temporary. We mm -hmm. ca call that kind of an acute kidney injury. That can happen if something, somebody's quite sick, something happens uh, you know, all of a sudden to their body and their kidneys can take a bit of damage from that. And often those things are kind of temporary. If the person gets through their illness, they kind of recover and go back right. to normal, like any other injury in the body. But then the one that we, we often think about uh, more is the chronic kidney disease. Right. And that's kind of what we're, we're, we're talking about a lot today. Right. And unlike something that's acute, that means Chronic means that it's with somebody for long periods mm -hmm. of time, and in most cases for the rest of, of their lives. And it's a wide range of things when we talk about chronic kidney disease. Some people have very mild amount of, of, of damage to their kidney that for the most part won't really progress or cause them any, any serious impact for the rest of their life. Whereas some people, their, their chronic kidney disease can be more advanced and, and go on to, to progress and get worse and worse, worse over, and worse over the course of years. There is no cure for kidney disease. Um, dialysis and a transplant are basically the two options. So you were just mentioning, you know, with kidney disease, you can go from sort of mild to severe. At what stage, or can you even, or what, I guess, at what stage would somebody need to look at one of those options? Yeah, so, you know, maybe I could say a few things about that. Yeah. So, um, not necessarily everybody who has kidney disease will go on and, and progress to, right. to need those things. So some people might have, you know, a mild amount that, although we can check tests and tell them that their kidneys aren't at 100%, it's no big impact to them. So just being told, someone being told that they have chronic kidney disease does not mean that they will go, go on right to need mm -hmm. dialysis or a right. transplant or things like that. For those people whose kidney disease is progressing or is getting worse over time, uh, I think we've come a long way in, in treating that. You're right, there's no cure, mm -hmm. but we have a wide network of chronic kidney disease clinics here in BC, right. and what the goal of those is, is even if we can't cure it or make the kidneys get better, our goal is if we can stop them from getting any worse or slow down any damage that's happening, you know, we can do a great service to, to people that way. Despite all those efforts, you're right. Some people do go on and, and need these these treatments like right. like dialysis or, or transplants. Um, you're also right to say that there's no one magic number that I can look at a blood test and says everybody needs dialysis or a transplant at X number. It's 
it's kind of a combination of things, but in general, once somebody's kidney function gets down below about 20% or so, that's when we start to think about, about those different options. How do you detect kidney disease? I mean, I, I, there's a special test, I think, that often people are told to go to their doctor and request a certain test to see if, they, if their kidney function is impaired. Yeah, there's some very simple tests that, that, that we can do. So there's one blood test that we look right. at called the creatinine value that, um, that can tell us how the kidneys are working. Mm -hmm. There are some things we look at in a very simple urine test as well that can give us some information about how the kidneys are doing. These are both very, very easy to do uh, tests. It's just a matter of going out and looking for them. So that's why we say the big thing is actually getting that message across that people who are at high risk need to be screened. How common is kidney disease? Yeah, so this is something that we've re really done a big push over the last few years to look at. And um, if you actually sample everybody, probably about 1 in 10 Canadians has some degree of chronic kidney disease. Mm -hmm. Now again, a lot of those might be, or some of those might be milder types of chronic kidney disease that aren't going to progress, but just that number is staggering. You know, I was even shocked when I first heard that. A lot of people, and I, I've often read this, they may have kidney disease, but they're not even aware that they have it. Right? Absolutely. Along with that 1 in 10 number, we say that probably over three quarters of the people uh, don't have any idea that they have chronic kidney right. disease. Just getting the awareness out there yes. is, is such an important thing. And that, that's why I'm so glad that we have things like Kidney Month and ways to just wait, raise awareness around the, the scope of, of, of this disease that I think has been flying under the radar for, mm -hmm. for too long. Thank you very much, Dr. Bevilacqua, for being on our show today, and I look forward to hosting you in the near future. My pleasure. Hi, I'm Kayla. Thanks for joining me with Community Calendar. Join us for a magical evening of triumph, inspiration, and hope at the 5th Annual Kidney Gala on Thursday, March 9th, 2017, which is also World Kidney Day. Prepare to be captivated by spellbinding entertainment, an amazing three-course gourmet dinner, a fabulous silent and live auction, and much more. Last year, tickets to attend the gala sold out, and thanks to our guests and sponsors, we raised a record-breaking $230,000. For more information and to purchase your tickets, please visit kidneygala.com. The Kidney Gala will feature incredible live and silent auction items and packages. One of the spectacular packages to bid on is an exclusive trip for two to Shearwater Resort and Marina with the choice of either a four days, three nights fishing and eco trip or five days, four nights fishing and eco trip. This all-inclusive package includes round trip airfare from YVR to Shearwater Marine Resort, guided vessel, accommodations, all meals, tackle, bait, fuel, floater coats, rain gear, and fish processing. The gateway to the Great Bear Rainforest, Shearwater, is located on the central coast of beautiful British Columbia, halfway between Port Hardy and Prince Rupert. Established in 1947, Shearwater is a world-renowned vacation destination. Whether you choose to visit by sea or by air, it is an experience like no other. From ecotourism, local culture, and some of the best sport fishing in the world, Shearwater is a place that will keep you coming back year after year. Shearwater Resort and Marina has proudly been supporting the Kidney Foundation since 2011. A chance to bid on this exclusive package is something you do not want to miss. After decades of performing throughout Europe and the United States, Montreal's Dick and Mitzi Productions bring their latest hilarious variety show, Top Hats and Tails, to Presentation House Theatre in North Vancouver from March 2nd to March 12th. Best described as Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers meets I Love Lucy, this retro comedy follows the lives and antics of a husband and wife vaudeville team. Like their characters in Top Hats and Tails, Andrea and Wayne are a husband and wife artistic team who face the highs and lows of life together. Their most serious and recent challenge was Andrea's diagnosis with kidney disease and her need for daily dialysis. But this hasn't put a stop to their Western tour and their first ever trip to Vancouver. Both Andrea and Wayne look forward to bringing their trademark high energy toe tapping production to Western Canada for the first time. Whether you're four or 104, this is a fabulous show you do not want to miss. Get your tickets now. 
The Kidney Foundation is an organization that supports patients living with kidney disease. If you know of an event that the kidney community should be aware of, we want to know. Get in touch with us via Twitter or let us know on our Facebook page. I'm Kayla. Join me next time on Community Calendar. And that wraps up another episode on Plugged In. A very special thanks to all of the guests in studio and on location. And of course, thank you for joining us on Plugged In. We also want to hear from you, so let's know what your thought of today's episode was. On Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, like, share, and spread the word, or email us at pluggedin at kidney.bc.ca. And special thanks to our sponsor, Kidney Car. Just want to leave you with one more thought. If you have not already done so, why not register your wishes to be an organ donor? It's easy and only takes two minutes of your time. Just go to kidney.bc.ca and click on the red register button. It works. I'm living proof. Absolutely. And remember, heroes aren't born. They're, They're registered. So thanks so much, everyone, for joining us again today. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. We'll see you next time on... Plugged In! I learned about hey, kidney right, story, guys. Guys. Cheers. I learned a lot. I hope to see you guys at the gala. Let me introduce my three great co-hosts here today. William, Daniel, and Amro. Okay. Right. Cool. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> she said you'd say action. So. It's very much a Ron Burgundy thing. If you write it, yeah. I just read it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I see it going on in the background. I couldn't help but look. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Bev. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Bevlin. Say it again. Bevilacqua. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Dr. Bevilacqua.